and welcome to episode 76 of Learn, Do, Become Radio. I'm April Perry, and at Learn, Do, Become, we help people who are drowning in the details of life to create simple systems so that we can all do what matters most. Now, so many people wonder, how do I possibly get my life organized? I can't even keep up with my laundry. I've got papers everywhere. I've got piles of stuff. I have rooms that are full. Or even if you don't have visual clutter, most people have minds that feel overwhelmed. It's hard to ever just enjoy a book or sit with your family or just drive in the car without feeling like there's a constant to-do list that's spinning in your brain. If you want that to stop, we know how to help you here at Learn Do Become. Now we have a special link for a free training if you haven't joined us yet. It's at learndobecome.com forward slash step. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll jump into the training that I held with Erin Sanderson and her community. You'll hear more about that once we get into recording and then I will see you on the other side. Yay. All right. We are now live going, going to have so much fun today with a special Q and A with Erin Sanderson. Okay. So Erin, let's go ahead and tell us a little bit about your community and then we're going to jump into some awesome Q and A today. Okay, so again, I just want to say thank you for taking time to spend a little bit of your day with me. I know you have like an amazing family and amazing business and everything. And so for me to like inch my way into your day, it means a lot to me and my community. So I am Erin Mullen Sanderson. For those of you who are new to me, my name is Fit Rocker Chick on Instagram, Facebook, social media. That's my website. I've been a touring musician my whole life. Um, Played with acts like Evanescence, Hailstorm, as a songwriter, had songs on MTV, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but I am passionate about helping women to live their most confident life. So I'm also the creator of the non-toxic skincare line called Skin, and I am the founder of the She's a Rock Chick Girl Gang, and those girls are just living the dream having you hang out with them today, April. Oh, I love it so much. And I love what you do. I love your enthusiasm. Erin and I have been in leadership communities together and I love what you do. I love your energy. And I'm hopeful that today as we talk about some specifics, we can help your community to be able to feel super calm because the more you have the stuff of your life together, the more you can then live your mission and do all these things that you're helping your community to do. I love that you said feel calm because that's really what it is. You know, it's like going to bed at the end of the day, feeling with, without the chaos. Yes. Oh my drowning gosh. in life. You know what I mean? So, and I'm going to show a few pictures. Can I do this? Oh, yes. <laughs> Tell what we do. So one of the main things that we do here at Learn to Become is help people who just have piles of stuff. And typically, if you live in one of these pictures, like what you see here on the left, you're not going to feel calm, correct? No, <laughs> like, that is not Zen. <laughs> I'm living in piles of stuff. And this is how a lot of people live. This is how I grew up. This is how many people live, whether it's, it could be smaller piles, like on your kitchen counter, but this desktop that you see here, very common. And it's not because people are lazy. It's not because they're not like great people most of the people who have a lot of clutter are actually very conscientious, very responsible, really compassionate. And that's why they have so much stuff is because a lot of things matter to them and they don't want to throw anything away or they don't want to miss out on serving someone. So they hold it and they keep it. Yeah. But what happens is when you have all of this, you start to feel like you're drowning. And then all of a sudden you have rooms that you don't even use anymore. <laughs> so what we do is help people who either mentally or mm -hmm. physically feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. and we help solve that. Mm -hmm. And it's actually done through a simple system. We actually don't teach people like, oh, here's how you clean a bedroom and here's how you clean a kitchen. Here's how we do. We don't do that. We show you here's how you actually build a system that's going to help your home be organized, help your kids be organized, or help you in your business. And it's the same exact principles that a college professor would use. This is actually a desk of a college professor, professor than a stay-at-home mom would use, or a stay-at-home dad, or someone who's starting a business from home. Like, it's the exact same principles. So today, we are gonna be answering some really specific questions that came from the community. Yeah. But more than anything, what our goal is, is is to help explain that there's actually a method to the madness. So you don't need to feel overwhelmed. You can actually make it happen. I love what you said about you're not lazy. 
you're not a bad person because when you are, when you have, I've seen those situations in real life in my family, like where you just don't use a room anymore because <laughs> and you start to feel so much shame about it. So what you just said is like releasing people, like you're an amazing person. You're super kind. And it's because you're so focused on like doing other things that just got out of hand and it's fine. April's here. She's going to help. I'll totally help. <laughs> We're going to talk about it. And what you see behind me, this is actually my command central. It's what I call it. There's some other parts to it. Like I use a paper planner and I use Evernote and I use my smartphone, things like that. But essentially the idea is that you have a place for every project, idea, task, routine, paper, so that when you find something, you know exactly where it goes and it'll come back to you when you need it. And that's the goal, like not to spend more than 10 seconds looking for something. Wouldn't that be awesome to never have to look for anything again? Yes. Like I... I would love you to come over to my house because I'm pretty proud of the organization that I have done. Okay. But like what you just said, I'm like, yeah, I don't have that nailed down. <laughs> well, see the thing is, so you are a really high achiever. You've got a lot going on and you make things happen. What I'm finding is that a lot of the people who want to get more organized are the high achievers because they know that they're doing great things already, but they also know that maybe they're even using 20 to 30% of their energy spinning because there's just not systems because they haven't had time to set them up. They've just been going so fast doing yeah. what they're great at. And so you know that if you could just streamline a few things, you'd breathe better, you would live your mission more fully, and you'd be like, okay. <laughs> now I'm ready to go. Yeah. So what do you say that? Because this morning I had a photo shoot for a really important project and I was needing to get out the door for that project, but I was I found myself like moving boxes in my office to this side of the room. And I was like, I said out loud to myself, you don't need to be doing this right now. Now is not the time. <laughs> I totally get it, but I love that. I love that. So, okay, let's go ahead. What we're going to do is dive into some great questions that your community put together. And I loved reading through these. And so Aaron and I both have a list, but Aaron's just going to go through them. We're going to talk it through and help each person who is either here now or watching later to be able to feel more and more calm as they see there's a solution to every situation that might cause overwhelm. Yes. I love that. Gosh, I love you so much. Okay. So let's begin with this question that came up a couple different times. Okay. What do this, this person writes, what do I do with my daughter's art? And there've been a couple of questions like, what do I do with the things that my children create? They don't want me to throw them away, but what do we do? Yes. Okay. Love it. So in our command central, we have three areas of the brain that we help people to organize. Okay. So in fact, one area is things that we're doing on a daily basis. So these are things like email management, calendar, you know, basic stuff, your task list for the day. Then we have like a weekly review, so we can talk more about that later, but then also we have things that are off the brain. Your children's art supplies, or even your own art supplies, these are things that you wanna keep off the brain. But typically a filing cabinet doesn't work for things like this because you're like, how do I even file? Especially, I know I was talking to your sister, she's like, I have piles of stuff, so much stuff. So what I'm gonna present to you today are just two ideas that help you to get things off the brain but also put them into a system so you know where you're going to find it or use it or store it. Because the last thing you want is to have boxes and boxes and throw everything in the boxes and store all of them for the rest of your life. You're gonna end up with like 80 boxes of things that your kids scribbled on pieces of paper or something like that. Right? We're, we're gonna end up on hoarders is where we're gonna oh, end totally, up. Totally, totally. <laughs> and I love that kids are creative and I love that they come home with things. So two ideas. Number one is called the sneaky sorter, okay? This is something that I invented when I had three preschoolers because we had so much stuff. It's two baskets that you keep in a place kind of close to the central area of your home. I used to keep it in my laundry room just up high. One basket is for art supplies that I will most likely throw away. The other basket are for the things I will most likely keep. Now you're going to have like nothing in the basket you'll most likely keep and a lot of stuff in the one you'll most likely throw away. The reason why we separate it is because children don't want you to decide right then or throw it away right then. They want to say, hey, what happened to that one little stick that I made? <laughs> if anyone's seen Toy Story 4, you know, she makes something out of a spoon and that's like her friend. <laughs> so what you want to do is have kind of an incubation, a space where you can put those things that you're kind of deciding on. Am I going to keep this or not? So if your kids do ask, you can go to it. But then what's beautiful is when you have this other one of things you will most likely keep You've got it separated, so you know. 
And then maybe once every three to six months when your children are asleep, <laughs> you go and anything you haven't pulled out of the most likely throw away, that just goes in the recycle bin. And then you have this little basket of things you'll most likely keep. Then what we would do is by the time that basket was fairly full, we would sit down with our kids and they get one banker's box. If you've ever seen those like at Costco or Sam's, yeah. something like that. Banker's boxes, they get one box for every five years of their lives. Okay. So we already have two children, one's in college and one's a senior in high school right now who are getting ready to leave the house. Each one of our girls and then our two boys, the, the girls right now each have four boxes from when they were zero all the way up to 18. And those boxes, they can fill it up, but it can't overflow. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't fit in the box, we take pictures, we do photo shoots with the art, but otherwise the things that they really cherish are in the box. This has been amazing because all as they were growing up, we're able to save the cutest things. Mm -hmm. We never had too much. And then as they're getting ready to leave their, the home, they just have four boxes and it has some of their best papers from high school. It has their kindergarten stuff, whatever they want, plus digital files that we store for them. Yeah. But that's pretty wow. easy, right? I love that idea. After you tell us, okay, so that was option one was the sneaky sorter, right? And then two is the banker boxes just for longer term storage. Okay. So it's never on your mind. It's just safe. So I'm going to segue okay. into like the next question because it's perfectly. Okay. I was thinking, can we use the sneaky sorter option for our husbands? Because yes. <laughs> we, have, we have so many comments, myself included, that were like, oh, what do we do? with yes. the piles that our husbands leaves on the counter. Like, what okay. So do you see my little magazine holders over here, the white ones? Yeah. So one of them is my incubation. Same exact thing. It's a folder where I incubate things that I most likely will throw away, but I'm just keeping in case. So sometimes if my husband left something out for me or, Hey, I want to think about this idea and I really don't even want to bring it up. <laughs> and I think it'll just kind of go away if I don't talk about it. I stick it in the incubation. Cause then if he says, Hey, did you get that thing? Oh yeah. And I can just go grab it real quick. Yeah. Right. But otherwise I have, and this isn't just for him. It's things for me. If there's something that I'm thinking about, I mean, you have to acknowledge that there are too many opportunities and invitations for everyone. Mm -hmm. it's whether you're a child or an adult, we cannot say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. So having a place to incubate is so important. And then you just have a little routine where I don't know, maybe once every six months or every year I empty it because I don't put a lot in it. It's just those things that I really don't want to throw away, but I really am not ready to keep. Right. That makes sense. Cause that, yeah. that's a lot of what makes up your clutter on your desk mm -hmm. is something like, Oh, that matters or it might matter. What do I do? <laughs> right? You I, have, um, I have a pile of things that matter, but don't have a home. Yes. Yes. That's kind of what it is. And if there's something where you haven't made a decision or you haven't made a commitment, but you aren't sure if you want to throw it away, we just incubate it. And worst case scenario, let's say you're about to put something into your incubation and you think, oh, but I, I might want to think about it six weeks from now. You just yeah. go to your calendar, create a little calendar trigger to remind you to check on it. Now your brain rests because it knows the item is safe. I'll get rid of it in a few months if I don't use it, but I'll be reminded in a few weeks through my calendar trigger if it's important. Yes. So well, that's the goal is that anytime you set a paper in a sneaky sorter or you put something in your incubation or you put something on your calendar, your mind just says, okay, it's safe. Now I can move on. Right. Okay. That's the goal. I love it so much. All right. Um, we have so many questions. Here we go. Okay. Next question is my counter is always covered in mail and bills. What do I do? I want a place of creativity instead of a place of crap. <laughs> okay. I love it. Well, and it was so funny because I've worked with literally hundreds of thousands of people over the past 10 years doing this. And we hear this all the time. A lot of people talk about the counter pile that gets so high that then one day it like slides over because it's like met the capacity of the pile, right? Or people say, well, then I just organize it into like a bunch of smaller piles or then around the perimeter of your office, you've got like, and this is a pile for this and this is a pile for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Piles everywhere, right? Maybe people are like me. My, uh, my husband is a saver and I'm a thrower. I'm like, he's like, we might need it. I'm like, but we don't. And so <laughs> there's this whole, like, you know what? I'm so glad you brought that up because that's one of the main problems I see as far as tension in households mm -hmm. is there'll be one person who's like, just get rid of it. It's taking up all my mental space. I can't stand it anymore. Or a lot of times I think it's, well, no, I won't say it's even gender specific. You'll see men and women. Sometimes they just like, I can't take it anymore. Yeah. We'll throw it away and it'll come back to us if it's important. 
the problem with that is as you're throwing things away, there really might be some critical things that are going to cost you time and money down the road. So the goal is to be able to have a hundred percent clear counter. And I can tell you for the last 10 years, since doing what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. I have never had a counter pile that lasted more than a few hours. It's always just stuff I'm dealing with that night. Yeah. So pretty amazing. And we've had four kids and lots of stuff going on and moves and businesses and all that stuff. And we don't have piles and I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But the problem is that the reason why we have piles on our kitchen counter or whatever is because not everything is ready to go to a filing cabinet. Mm. Most of us have a filing cabinet and we know how to alphabetize folders. But what if you have a, an advertisement where you can get your pet groomed, but it's only the special coupons only good for two weeks from now, right? You're like, well, I can't put my filing cabinet. I'm never going to see it. So I'll just leave it here on the counter to remind me in two weeks to go yeah. get it. Or you might have bills that are due at different dates, or you might get a bill that was done wrong and you actually don't owe that much. So you need to make a phone call on it, right? So there's so many different things. It's not just like, oh, here's all your papers, put them in a filing cabinet or work on them. It's not like that. It's like, well, this one I need to wait till I hear back from the babysitter to see if I could actually go to this or I have to wait to see if we have a conflict or maybe we're going to see, right? And so what happens is in your head, you have all of these, well, but uh, I can't. And then you set it on the counter and you just say, I'll just deal with it later because someone's yeah. hungry or you're hungry or you've got to go do something. And then your brain starts to just look at it, not even as individual papers, but just the pile. Yeah. And then at the end of a long day, the last thing you want to do is go try to make sense of the pile because it's going to make your stomach hurt when you realize how much stuff you're not doing. Okay. So how do we solve it? Yeah. Actually, first what? of all, you, you complete me. Okay. <laughs> me because when you're saying that I'm like oh you get it you yes. get it and these are skills that nobody ever taught us right yeah, I know mean, yeah. you go to high school you learn chemistry you learn how to put together all these atoms and <laughs> electrons or whatever but whoever shows you what to do with the thousands of pieces of paper that is going to come yeah. and when you learn how to manage the paper like I actually have a digital system that mirrors this then you know what to do with emails and you know what to do with messages on social media and you know what to do with your projects okay so basically what you see behind me, this one right here, this is my inbox. So rule number one, when your mail comes or when you get stuff, we use the two minute rule where anything that's trash, put it in the trash, you know, or recycle anything that, oh, actually, and I need to pay this or take care of it right now, two minutes or less. You just do it in two minutes or less. This needs to go on my calendar. Do that two minutes or less. Anything that's two minutes or less, David Allen coined this two minute rule, do it, okay? So then by the time you've done all of that, you should just have a smaller pile that you're going to deal with. Mm -hmm. Then if the goal is to have a weekly review, it's about one hour a week, and sometimes I break it into four 15 minute chunks, but it's one weekly review where you're actually gonna process and go through the whole spiel, <laughs> where you're gonna look at your projects and your emails and all that stuff all at once. But what we do is I do a weekly review that's once a week mm -hmm. and anything that can wait until that weekly review just goes right here into my inbox. Mm -hmm. And then I just know, okay, once a week I process the inbox. It's not a big deal. But then anything that would need to get done before the weekly review. Yeah. I've got it in my planner or scheduled on my calendar. Like, Hey, I'm going to work on this tomorrow and just get these things moving because they are more urgent. Okay. So you're kind of creating these segments, right? Like the trash, the weekly yeah. review, and then things I've got to do a little sooner, get them on my calendar or put them, right on top of my workspace. So I'm going to work on those things, but that's like two or three things. We're not talking 50 things on your pile. We're talking right. about like, you know, a couple little things I've got to take care of, which is right. great. Okay. Then what I love, and this is what like makes me so excited and giddy is, and I'm actually working on like a YouTube channel or doing more of their YouTube channel to show people how to process, like just taking flyers and bills and papers and all these different scenarios and showing them how it works because there's actually just a series of like eight questions that you ask yourself. Some of them are things like, okay, is there anything on this list that's a routine or a project that mm -hmm. needs to go on that list? Um, if it's something like you'll, these cubbies behind me, mm -hmm. these organize my papers by um, like category of my life. So I'll have like a business one. I have one for kids. I have household management. So current projects, current responsibilities, these are all active folders. It's not a filing cabinet. These are active. So let's say you're working on content for a class that you're doing next month in your membership and you've got written notes. You can have a folder just for that in this one cubby so you know exactly where to go to get it when you're working. Then when you're done, you just put it back. 
So having like something that gives you the ability to segment what your active projects are, that's going to help you not end up having those little segmented piles all over your house. Just putting cubbies. Yes. Good. Wow. I like, I'm like literally wanting to like get up, like organize like myself. Do it all around. Get little cubbies in the whole thing. Oh my gosh. It's awesome. And then one other thing I'll show you, do you see that little magazine or that little folder holder yeah. here at the back? That's called my tickler. Okay. This is like a little secret. It's, it's called your what? Your tickler folder. A lot of people don't <laughs> like that name. Um, you could call it date specific files. Okay. <laughs> tickler okay. means it like tickles your memory. It's something oh, that's related God, to that. a date specific event. <laughs> so <clears throat> the way I make, wait, make mine is 12 folders, January through December. Okay. Okay. And a lot of times you'll get something like, oh, here's an invitation to an event and it has the map on it and everything. Or maybe someone gives you tickets and it's actual tickets. Now, because most things are digital, you can use a digital tickler folder, which I do, but, or keep it in your email or something like that. But what I love about this is like, let's say I have a senior and a junior, they're taking AP tests. For some reason, when you go to take an AP test, they don't let you do a digital scan. You actually have to print out your receipt and bring it with you to an AP test. Now, what typically happens is a parent will print it out or the kids will print it out, but the AP test isn't for another three weeks. So then what do you do with this printed paper you have to take on a certain day? Right. Like put it in the pile, right? <laughs> like what else would you put it on the fridge, right? With a magnet or something with everything else. So you often have things like, well, I have to take this on that day. Right. So what you do is you create your calendared event and then you put a little T with parentheses around it if you're digital or like a circle or whatever on your calendar. So when you're going out to take your AP test, you notice that there's a little T, which means the date specific paper is in your monthly folder. Mm. So if we're in May, then I just go to my May folder, open it take it out and it's right there. Love that. So what happened, like jury duty, they'll give you badges you have to take, right? There's so many things like that where you have to have it at a specific, specific time. That's yeah. what the tickler's for. So my goal is to help people to learn how to actually decipher what's on their counter. Because if you think of it like, oh, it's a counter pile, <laughs> there's nowhere to put it. I mean, I, I even watched this one video that was trying to help people solve it. And this is, this is legitimately what they said, go around your house, stack things up, bind them with string and just label where it was in your house and then put it in a box. And I'm thinking, you're never going to see that again. You're never going to go through it again. Like that's a great way to get rid of the papers, but it's not a good way to manage your life. Cause you're just no. going to have all these bound packages of papers. Right? So the goal is, so I mean, I'm answering the question kind of like big picture, but the goal is that if you can learn how to use your calendar really well, if you can learn how to use project support cubbies, how to use a tickler, how to incubate, how to do a Sunday list, like there's all kinds of things that you can learn how to actually uh, utilize as a system. It's going to change your life because you're going to feel like, Oh, you know, I've got it. I'm actually yeah. going to show you a picture real quick because I actually, I made it visual. And that's one of the things that's unique about what we do is we sh actually show people like, here's your system. This is the whole command central, everything that you see right here on the screen. These are my daily things. This wow. is my weekly, how I do a weekly review. And then these are my engage as needed resources. Everything here in engage as needed. That's what you see behind me. And then weekly, this is mostly the inbox you see behind me and then lists. And then the engage daily, I use like a Google calendar, um, context-based next actions list. I have a little picture of one. I can show you there's a little example of one. You could just have a piece of paper that has the context where you do activities. Yeah. Um, and then we keep emails to zero and we have a whole system to show people how to do that. But this is the command central. And so I have this goal of a command central on every desk. Like I actually want people in the future when they apply for a job to say, oh, I have my step command central already in place, which means like I'm a rock star. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, my papers and things organized, but yeah. that's, the, that's the vision is that you've got this system and then your brain knows where everything goes. Okay. So then what do you do? Where does like, for example, I'm looking at this and I'm wondering where notes go. So I go to conferences like you do. I take notes on calls. Like I'm taking notes right now. Wow. Um, and, the, and then what do I do with my notes? Because right. I, I have all these notebooks and maybe this is where I'm going wrong. Let me just show you. <laughs> I love it. Help me, April Perry, help me. Okay. But, so I have these notebooks yeah. and I write my notes like throughout the week on these. Yeah. 
And then there's some really good stuff in here that I don't necessarily want to throw away. Yeah. And so what I do is I have a big, like one of those boxes you were talking about mm -hmm. and it's labeled experience notebooks. <laughs> and I just put them in there, but like at some point it's going to overflow because I don't plan on stopping taking notes anytime soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, okay, well, things. first of all, Erin, you're a step ahead of most people because you're taking notes. Have you noticed that a lot of people go to conferences or seminars and they actually don't write anything down? They're just like, hey, I'm just here to absorb it. But mm -hmm. if you didn't take notes, you know you'd get a lot less out of it, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, just acknowledging yourself that that's really good, okay? <laughs> so I'm just like, I know if I hear it and I write it down, I'm so much more likely to remember it and take action on it. So I just like, I, I, and I love pen and paper. It feels yeah. delicious. So, okay. So I'm going to answer your question by using just this image here that I've got. Okay. So first of all, where those notes are going to reside is in your filing cabinet. Okay. okay. Now it doesn't have to be um, a physical cabinet. The way that I do it, like we just were at a conference together last week and I have, you know, 30 pages of notes. I actually go take photos of each page and I use evernote.com. Okay. I have an Evernote for every conference I attend. I date it, I title it, and I have a notebook stack called Conference Notes. So I've been in this specific leadership community that we were in for three years. Uh -huh. I have every single quarterly events notes in there. So I can find them on my phone. And I think that that's important nowadays because you can keep the hard copy, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's as necessary anymore because it's so easy to digitize, okay? So that's where they're going to reside but okay. they are organized in a way you can find them. So if you said April 2017, June, go find your notes right now from that event. I would just go do a quick search and I could find it in like 10 seconds and I can show you everything that I did at that event, oh right? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So that number one is helpful. Yeah. But the other thing is when you take the notes, after you get back from the event, what you wanna do is go through those notes and create a little executive summary of what you want to do because of that event. Okay. Mm. So you end up with maybe a little one page sheet, like, okay, here are things I'm going to do as soon as possible. And you have maybe like five things. Mm. Here's things I'm going to do someday soon. And you write down those things, or here's some other key ideas I want to review again in the next month. Then with that sheet, you go ahead and you put them into your system. So those things that you're not going to act on now, but you want to review in about a month, I go to Asana and I have this little calendar trigger I create. I take a photo of those things. I go into Asana and I create a task that will remind me about it a month from now. Mm -hmm. Now my brain rests. I'm like, hey, the best parts of that event, I'm going to have them come back to me in a month. I'm going to review this. Love um, that. If there's items that you want to do someday soon, but not now, you think, well, when would I want to be reminded about these 10 things? probably after the new year, maybe that would be a good time for me. So you take a little photo of that, you create a little calendar trigger, and now those are gonna come back to you in about a month. But the ones you're gonna act on right now, that's where they go into your projects list, okay? Now I'll show you a little example of how that can work. Um, you can do, I actually created digital or paper ones just to make it a little bit easier because sometimes people get a little scared when they're talking about um, going into Asana, they're like, I don't know, how do you use that? But it's ASANA.com. That's just one example of something that's great. But you could, it could be as easy as this. And I really like Asana because you can search for term. Oh, yes, great. it's awesome, it's yeah. awesome. But you could just have a little folder called current projects, like nothing fancy. And then you have this, okay? So it says projects for me, my family, and beyond. Now I do this every single month. I have a new current projects list. And my daughter actually puts it, I can show you, we haven't switched over to our November one yet, but you can see it on my wall. See this little chalkboard? Yes. Okay. So she decorates that for me and puts my current projects up for the month. This is what yes. I'm doing. But a little paper version, if you wanted, these are projects for you. So maybe you're taking a course this month, or maybe you're focusing on nutrition, or maybe you're focusing on skincare. Like what is it that you're doing this month? Family, maybe you're helping a child, like our daughter just applied to college, so that was one of my projects, is like, let's do this college application. You know, she needed a little bit of support with her essays and things like that. And then beyond, this is worker volunteer stuff. So I just have a couple of projects, like maybe I'm doing a hire this month, or maybe I'm, I'm getting a new system in place, right? So you have a very short list, seven to eight projects for the month. And then other ones would go on something like this, like a next in line list. 
where you say, these are projects I want to do, but I can't do them right now. So they're waiting in line. Asana is great because it lets you organize things and you can tier them. I have like a few extra tiers, but the idea is that you have a super simple list of projects. But what's wonderful is if I go to a conference and I come home, sometimes my project shift because I learned something new. Right. And so I think, okay, actually this project that was at the top is now going into next in line and this new one's coming up to the top. Mm. But think of it kind of like a pyramid. You can only have a couple projects at the top because if you're working on 50 projects at the same time, you're not going to work on any of them and you're going to end up procrastinating. So as you take your notes, if you learn how to pull out your calendar tasks, pull out simple next actions, like, oh, I'm going to send this email or, oh, I'm going to sign up for this thing. Or, I'm going to read this book. Okay. Go order the book on Amazon or whatever you're doing. You get those little tasks done and then you update your projects list so that, you know, now this is what I'm working on. And then you have that calendar trigger that gets you back to the notes. So you're not going to forget them. This creates this virtuous cycle where now every time you attend an event, you know that those notes are going to actually impact your personal life, your business, and you know they're safe. You can access them whenever you want. And you've seen the tasks and projects actually filter into your current system so it doesn't cause stress. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes so much sense. And I love it so much because what I do... <laughs> <laughs> I just keep my entire notebook on my desk because I'm like, I okay. need to get to things like that, you know, like yeah. I need to do things. And then it, yeah. it, it feels very overwhelming. So just picking yeah. and choosing and, and being cognizant of choosing yeah. the things that are important and putting them in the calendar. So I can, like when you said that, I was like, oh, then I could put it away and I could just like, yeah. no, it's going to come back around and it's time when I, when I need yeah. to do it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Not fun. It's beautiful. I love that. Okay. So then I had, an, I had a couple other questions okay. um, that are selfish before I get back to the question <laughs> that my community is asking. So I have some things that I keep on my desk all the time. Um, we are always growing and expanding our team. And for me, when we bring on new people, sometimes it's hard for me to remember their name, their job title, where they're from. And when we're having like new introductions of team meetings, like this is just a random example. Yeah. yeah. I need that full list. Everyone's name, everyone's everything, like their title, where they're from, a little background right now, especially in the season of growth. And so what do I do with that? Like I, I just have it on a piece of paper on my desk. Okay. Where would that go? Well, I'll tell you where I would put it and then you can see if that makes sense. So we have our team meeting agenda inside of Asana. So Danielle is actually my assistant who's here on the um, call right now. She helps to create our agenda, things that we need to cover. And inside of Asana, there's a little section called description. Mm -hmm. So what we do is inside the description, we include links to anything that's important for every meeting. Yeah. So you can have a link to an Evernote, for example, that could have all of your people's names and their roles or link to a Google sheet that you could just put right there. You can same thing with your, like if you read traction or rocket fuel, which I know we've learned a lot about that and you've got your rocks for the quarter or you've got, you know, your goals for the next 10 years or whatever that you want to be able to review with your team. You mm -hmm. could have a link to that as well. So then what would happen is you get on a team meeting, you open up Asana or whatever project management tool you're using. And then right at the top, before your agenda and before all those things, you just have links to the key information that you might need during those meetings. You can make mm -hmm. as long as you want. You can bold, you can have bullets or whatever, or you could just paste everyone's names and roles right in there. Yeah. But the, the goal is that you think, well, when would I need that? What would I be using? What would be open for me during that time? And how could I make this so simple that it would be one click? to be able to get all that information and make it accessible to everyone. So it's not just me editing it, right? Like I'd probably use a Google sheet because as you have a growing team, then your assistant could help manage that, keep it up to date, but the link's always active and it's just right there. Oh my gosh. I do believe you just changed my life. <laughs> You're so cute. And I was thinking like when you said that, I was like 10 seconds. She's just telling me the 10 second rule, yeah. like find whatever you need. Isn't that fun? <laughs> yes, it's so fun. Okay, let's do one more question okay. from my community because most of their questions were around piles of paper. Oh, oh, I feel like I have two more questions. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> okay, one is what about laundry? Like, what if your laundry situation is like I, I wash it and I dry it and then the pile of things, you know what I'm saying? It just keeps accumulating. 
we had this question and I'm like, I feel you. Okay. Let's talk laundry for a minute. Cause this is actually a really fun one. Um, there's a difference between a project and a routine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure we clarify because what a lot of people do is they'd say, Hey, I'm just going to go solve the laundry problem, which means I'm going to do nothing for a week and I'm just going to wash and I'm going to fold, I'm going to put away, and we're just going to solve the problem. But you actually didn't solve the problem. All you did was temporarily get to know laundry, but then everyone's going to do the same thing they were doing before. Right. Okay. So first you want to decide if I want to create this outcome vision of how I imagine laundry. I mean, the way we do it right now is we have laundry that's done you know, about one day a week. It's a family laundry or older kids do their own, but laundry is done. It's folded. It's put away. And it's just not an issue anymore. Okay. So how do you get to something like that? Yeah. You might have a couple of projects that need to be done first. Okay. Mm -hmm. One project might be, we actually need to reduce how many clothes we have because mm -hmm. I found that most people who struggle with laundry piles also have like 80% more clothing than they actually wear. Mm -hmm. And so they end up trying things on or throwing it down and they think it might be dirty. <laughs> you don't know. And so you end up washing a lot more than you actually needed to. So first might be, we're going to go through one closet at a time and we're just going to streamline. We're going to do the Marie Kondo thing. We're going to throw it all in the bed, whatever, whatever sparks joy we keep, but we're going to streamline every closet and every drawer in the house. That first of all, is going to feel amazing because then you're not going to have that much laundry, but then you're going to say, all right, but then are we doing, what's our system going to be? So that's actually a project is to create a laundry system. If you have a family, that's a discussion. Okay. So are we doing laundry one day a week? Is one person doing it? Are we all folding it? Like when our kids were little, I had one laundry day as things came out of the dryer, I just kind of shook them and made it so they wouldn't wrinkle or hung things up that need to be hung up right away. Then we had a laundry folding party with all the kids. So I sat in the middle of the living room. We made piles of each person's clothes. Plus we like shifted like one person did bath towels, one person did hand towels, one person did socks. And we had, we turned on music and then our five-year-old wanted us to put underwear on our heads. That's what we did. So we did and we yes. had a party with laundry. Okay. Right now, my husband actually does the laundry. That's his job. And so he does it every Thursday. Our son, who's 12, brings up his laundry, sorts it. He just does two to three loads and he folds it all and then we all put it away. So there's not like one right way to do it. Or some people hire someone to come in and do the laundry, but they have it all ready for them. So yeah, so there's was, one way, right? I was going to say that um, I have done a couple of those things. So my closet and everything is very organized right now. That's one of the oh, areas that good. I would first if you came over. <laughs> good. But um, yeah, I got rid of a lot of clothes and then I, I had... I hired someone who did my laundry for probably two years okay. and she'd bring it back. She would pick it up. Oh, she take it. Turn. Off. She would pick it up on my front porch at 5 a.m. I'd never even <laughs> saw her. And she would bring it back the next morning, folded, undrop it on my front porch. She's like my laundry fairy. But what I found is I actually, I will, and you could probably relate to this. I love working mm. and I will work if I have a free minute. So what I found was it's actually really good for me to do my own laundry oh, because a little break. with my hands mm -hmm. that keeps me feeling busy, but it's not actually working on it, you know? So yeah. anyway, no, I love, I love wiping my own kitchen counters and cleaning things sometimes. Like I, it's like, I enjoy cleaning my own bathroom. I know it sounds <laughs> good, but like, I like it. It gives my brain a little break. Think about yes. things, work with the kids. Like, yeah. It's like physical activities, mindless. Like it kind yeah. of feels, but we do it, um, or I do it on Sunday. Like I feel like Sunday is like the day. Yeah. yeah. So now piggybacking on that, when it's out of control, you said when your laundry is out of control, typically this is the issue. So my last question to you is what if something is out of control? Like what if like the desk is like out of control or yeah. a whole bedroom is just unusable. It's out of control. Yeah. My question kind of within that question is in my own personal experience, I'm not speaking for everyone. I found that in those, in those instances, typically the person involved in it is not super jazzed about someone coming in to help them get rid of like, all of them. So where do you start? Like what yeah. do you do? Well, and so that's why I actually don't go into anyone's home. We teach people how to do it and they all do it themselves because the idea is that the whole thing, like teach someone to fish or give them a fish. I think if I were to go into someone's home and clean it for them, which I've done before, I don't think it's helpful because once I leave the old habits come back and they haven't learned what to do. Most of the photos I showed earlier are the exact situation. Things are totally out of control. So what do you do? So we have our program steps to everyday productivity where we walk people through exactly how to do this. So Erin, you'll have a link that you can share with your community. We'll yeah, I'll give you guys a link to, this, to her class. 
and we'll have a link here with this video as well. But the idea is that we need to help you get out of the panic mode and then create the foundation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the way we get out of panic mode, first of all, is you're just going to clear one little spot. That's going to be your command central. This thing that I have behind me, or if you can make it all digital if you want, or you can li literally, this is a command central, just a few folders. You can do it really simply. It doesn't have to be cubbies and all that. But you need to have a place to organize your brain because if you go into a crazy bedroom or a crazy office and you're like, oh, let me just organize all of this, it actually doesn't work. But if you can create a little space and create a very simple system, even just using like nine or 10 file folders, then what you're going to do is you're going to scan the room or scan the office. Let's imagine it's a desk and you're going to get anything off that's like urgent the next seven to 14 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff on your desk is not. I would say maybe 5% needs to be addressed in the next seven to 14 days. Most people who are living in piles, this has been gathering for months, most likely. So you just gather the stuff that's, okay, that bill's due next Friday. That one's due. Okay. Anything that's urgent, then the rest of it, you're actually going like put off to the side, put it in boxes, put it in something because you're going to get to it, mm -hmm. but you're just going to clear and create a simple system. And then you're going to start working from there. And then the way that we think about it is you don't try to organize the whole house at once you pick a room. So if it's your office, awesome. That's a great place to start. Um, bedrooms are also a great place to start, or maybe like a kitchen, if you've got a family and everyone's in there all the time. So you want to start in the room where I think of it like dominoes, which domino, if I knock this one over, would make everything else better. Yeah. A lot of, for a lot of people it's the office. So that's why we help them build a command central. But if you're thinking, okay, for right now, all of my other rooms in my house or whatever, they're going to go onto my next in line list, but on my current projects list is going to be build my command central and get my office organized. And then after you've kind of cleared things off and you've built your system, now you need to start going through all the stuff that you've shoved over to the side, right? But I think of it like food that I'm bringing in from the car after the grocery store. Mm. You know, like, let's say it's 95 degrees outside and you just went to the store. And yeah. you've got ice cream and you've got some frozen foods or whatever, but you also have like a package of crackers or, you know, something like that, that could sit there. What are you going to bring in first? Exactly. <laughs> you're going to go get like, yeah, that ice cream or whatever it is that's frozen or the stuff that like, oh, it can't stop there. And then you're going to go for the eggs or whatever, you know, that you don't want to go bad. So then that's what you start doing. You start, I think of it like a target and you start with the stuff. It's like, okay, this has got to be processed first level one. So we encourage people as they're kind of moving things off to the side, create like a level one, level two, level three. So that way, those old papers that you're saving from, you know, your grandma's stuff that she gave to you, I mean, like stuff like that, that's level three. You don't even need to worry about that, right? But the level one, oh, here's all the stuff for, let's say you're a, a teacher, all the stuff I need for our fall um, curriculum. That's going to be first, right? Cause you're going to get that organized. Yeah. But the whole idea is that you learn how to organize your mind into projects. Mm. So you identify what's the problem. Okay. What are the supporting projects? And then which one's the highest priority? And then you focus on those ones that are the highest priority and you start getting those done and turn them into the routines. So if laundry is your biggest issue, great. We're going to have some projects to streamline some projects, to have some conversations, figure out a system. Then we're going to practice the routine and start figuring that out. Get the family on board. I used to have a child who threw all of their clothes behind the bathroom door, no matter what. It, the clothes never made it into the hamper. I'm not kidding. We would practice. We, the clothes were always behind the bathroom door. So what we did is put a little hamper behind the bathroom door. And now <laughs> it went right in. I mean, there's lots of things that you can do to start figuring it out. The problem is that most people are trying to figure out 18 problems at the same time. And that's why they stop. But if you're just figuring out one thing, like, hey, I just want to keep my nightstand clean. That's it. Or I just want my desktop clean. That's it. You can do that. And then you figure out a routine that will support you. And that goes on your routines list, which is part of your weekly review. There's some, it, it's really fun to see how it all fits into it. But the goal is you get a system in place. It's going to maintain itself and you're not going to be stressed out. Yeah. That's like the recipe for happiness as well. <laughs> you know, like not focusing on like yes. you know, 17 different things and be like, and I'm be present with this and I'm working on this and you know, like yeah. it's just sorting your sorting your life, you know, and just yes. making a conscious decision of what is priority right now. Yeah. And knowing the, the rest of the stuff is going to work out. There's no, there's no point in worrying about it because it's next in line. 
And it's, your brain won't forget it because it's on a list and you're going to review it and you're going to get to it. I mean, I know you help people for years with health issues to learn how to have better health. For most people, if you're struggling, that's going to be your highest priority, right? Let's get our health in check because then I'm going to have the energy to do all these other things. That's going to be high. Or let's say someone's struggling in their marriage right now, or let's say someone's struggling with a child or, you know, oh, I've got to get this business profitable ASAP to be able to pay my bills. Great. That's going to be up at the top. But if you're going to try to build the business and fix the marriage and take care of your health and try to clean the whole house and change your diet and all of this, all at the same time, you're going to be having panic attacks and you're going to feel like you're failing. Yep. And the goal is to recognize we're all human, you know, all of us struggle, all of us have stuff we need to do, but when you can learn, okay, here's my projects, here's my routines, and maybe even check in if you have a spouse, hey, this is what I'm working on this month. Does that feel good to you? Does this seem like that's a good idea for me knowing me? <laughs> do you think that this is the right thing for you working on? Because sometimes my husband will be like, April, why are you doing that? You just need to focus on sleep right now. Like that should be your project. April <laughs> sleeps. <laughs> I was just going to say, my husband, Levi, will be so honest with me. He just said, you know, a couple months ago, do you really think this, <laughs> that that's a good idea? Because you already have this and this. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we tend to feel like, you know, we're the people at the buffet who are filling up our plate. We're like, oh, that looks good. That looks good. And oh, you end up with this. Yeah. And then you, because my husband's always like, April, you are having a good day today. So you think you can do 50 things. But I'm the person who's going to live with you on the down day when you're going to be crying and telling me that I'm ruining your life because, and <laughs> like, all right, all right. So, yeah, we get it. So relate to that. I could so relate. To, okay. So, so how can people, you said your course was called Step. So, but, it's, yeah, Steps to Everyday Productivity. We have an eight module program that just teaches you everything you would need to know how you set up your lists, how you put it all together. We have a mastery option that has a Facebook community. We have more than 8,000 people in the community right now. It's amazing. They are fantastic. We have coaches. We've got a whole team here to help. So we have a free class that Erin has a link to. You'll we'll get a link to you. So our free class basically teaches you how you narrow down your projects list, learn how to identify next actions, learn how to actually create lists that you can work from and feel an instant, ooh, that's fun. So you can pick a project, something that feels overwhelming, and then during the class, a little worksheet, we just take you through how that's gonna get done. Then if you wanna build the full system, like what I have here, and you're thinking, this is gonna change my life, I can't wait, then you can come join our full program, and it's literally life-changing. Like we have 25, almost 25,000 people who have some version of our program who are Stop building it right now. Isn't that awesome? Yes. I mean, it's, and we've had hundreds of thousands of people take our free training. So, and this is something that works. Like our, our, we were talking with our team the other day and they're like, the biggest problem we have right now is just keeping up with all the testimonials coming in. Cause people are like, look what I just did. Look what I just did. And they're getting results. And I think more importantly, when you know, you're not alone and you mm. know, like, Oh, most people have clutter and overwhelm. They just don't post it on social media. Yes. So you don't know. Thank you. Right? Thank you. <laughs> it's like, I cracked me up when people are like, Oh, you, you do this too. I'm like, okay, listen, sister, <laughs> what you see on social media is not the whole story. No, no. <laughs> and there's, up. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of relief when you can understand like our brains weren't made to do a million things at the same time. And so when you can learn how to organize your mind, then your space and everything follows. And the reason I'm good at this is because I'm really bad at stress. I don't handle stress well. And when I started having kids and running a business, I literally was like, Eric, I can't function. Like I'm so stressed out about all the stuff I need to do. And all these kids' lives depend on me and I'm trying to build it. Like it just felt like so much. But when I learned how to do this, this solved my pain point. And then I was so excited to start teaching everybody and now it's grown. <laughs> so we have a lot yeah. more. I mean, it's, it's like, I can't even imagine. I don't have human children yet. I have furry children <laughs> um, at the moment. Yeah, and it's, hard new. <laughs> it's hard enough to keep them alive and like my husband alive, and like do everything else. You know, I, I think I well, first of all, I'm coming to your free class because that's okay. it's so exciting. I already have two pages of notes just from like 45 minutes together. 
but I feel like this would be really fun to do with my friends, like to take your free class with my friends and my family. Like I'm going to invite my mom because she's got tons of papers everywhere. And like, she's at the point, like, she's like, I don't even want to, I don't even want to face it because oh. it seems like such a mountain to climb. So I feel like doing this with people, like doing this with your people. So good. So it good. Our friends so just fun. did this. They, they took our class. They learned, they took our course and went and learned how to do it. Then they went to their mother, mother-in-law's house and she was getting ready to move and totally helped her declutter her whole house. Because that's what I'm finding is that I mean, every generation needs this. Our daughter created a version for students because students need it. Kids need it, right? So kids ages like 12 to 20, they're building their little, they're a little different. Oh, than this. Yeah. Little mini command central. All my kids have little mini command centrals. Like, that right? was a question I was going to ask you. I was like, yeah. Should, can Levi have his own command central? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone has their own. Each adult has their own and then kids have their own. And then, you know, you can figure out where the overlap is. Yeah. But it's so great. And like, this is what I teach my kids and I don't force it on them. So like I have a, teenager who's still trying to get on board but whenever that teenager feels overwhelmed and I'll just sit down and say okay this would go here and this would go there and they're like oh like that actually feels good right the goal is you get a lift yeah. but also I found that a lot of people who are where we are where we're professionals and we're managing a lot of projects we need the system because there's too much coming at us nowadays there's never been a generation that has had this many opportunities and messages and courses and you know all of this at once so we have to have it to be able to function and to be able to excel in the marketplace. Yeah. But our parents' generation, or even just the next, you know, people 10, 15 years ahead of us, they don't want to die and leave piles of junk to their kids. Mm -hmm. That's something that we found is like, people are like, I don't want to leave my life like this. I want to be able to be clear and have everything wonderful so that when I pass on, my kids have the best of me and don't have to come sort through storage units of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting to see people from all walks of life who come in and who are making change and you're never too old and you're never too young. If you are feeling overwhelmed and you have a desire to make a change, you absolutely can. And you know, our system isn't the only way to do it, but it's a really good way to do it. And yeah. I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited to do it, April. I cannot wait. Weird. I'm so glad. I'm gonna, like bring in my whole crew. And we'll all, we'll I all love it. Yeah. yeah. And if you do the course, our team member, Kristen, created Google Sheets that say how fast you want to get it done. Because it's like 15 to 20 hours to do the whole thing. You um, could do it in two days. If you said, I'm just going to devote two days and we're just going to knock it out. She's got it all. Here's how you do it. If you want to take two weeks, if you want to take a month, one to three months, she has it all worked out. So here's the steps you would do each day. And they're all just in there for you. So it's that is amazing. So you can go at your own pace. You can yeah. hit it as hard as you want to. If you have a free weekend, yeah. <laughs> you oh, know, I did it in five days because I read the book, getting things done by David Allen. And I used to work with Franklin planners. That was my thing. I was all in love with it. I still use Franklin planners, but I read the, his book and I'd read all these other books and it all like clicked this one day. So I literally stayed in my pajamas for a week. I canceled everything, fed the kids cereal for dinner, pretty much every meal we had cereal. And I just built and I processed. I stayed up to like three o'clock in the morning getting my emails to zero. And then I went through everything in my house. And then what happened is I was literally walking around my house and I had nothing to do. Every room was clean. Every email, I kept checking my computer and all my emails were at zero. And I had no papers and everything was filed. And I was like, well, okay, now I have all this time. So, so then I started running a business from home and working with my husband. And then he left his job and started working with me from home. And so now we have this life where we get to choose how we use our time and we're not reactive. You know, we used to be reactive, move things in piles, feel overwhelmed. And now it's a totally different thing. So that's my mission is I want to help people get out of that overwhelm. You don't have to feel overwhelmed. Some people think it's just everyone in life feels overwhelmed. You just have to deal with it. It's not true because I'm not. And we have thousands of people who aren't. <laughs> we'll show you how. So well, you're about to have lots more. I know. I'm so excited. That's why I'm here. So thank, thank you Karen. so much. Thank you so much for like just taking time and being so gracious and answering our questions and for, I mean, you just make people feel so calm. <laughs> I remember like one of the first times I met you, you just put your arm around me and you were like, how's, how's today going? And I was like, I, I was, I was, today was going, it was going all right. But I was like, I've had better days and you're like, oh, I mean, so, so <laughs> 
home and helpful and I'm just so grateful and I cannot wait to take your class. So for those of you who are in my community, I will post a link in the community yeah. as soon as I hop off here or my assistant has already posted the link. Not really sure what's going on in there. Yeah. Um, and then I will see you at class. Okay. All right. Thanks, Erin. Bye, guys. Thank <laughs> you so yeah. much. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode of Learn Do Become Radio. It was so much fun to get to meet with Erin and her community. And I'm really hopeful that the ideas that we discussed at least maybe sparked some new thoughts for you, solutions to some of the challenges that you might be facing. And I hope that you feel excited about moving forward in your life. It is the best feeling to wake up in the morning and not feel anxious or stressed. I actually was telling Eric this morning, like, I woke up feeling so good this morning. Not only learning how to organize my tasks and papers and things like that, but learning how to change the dialogue in our minds, learning how to focus on the things that are going to help us ultimately to be most successful in our families and our personal lives and our careers and our service. And we're so grateful you're part of the Learn to Become community. Our community is growing and growing and growing. We have thousands and thousands of people every month coming in, <laughs> and we hope that you are enjoying being part of the community as well. There are links related to the things that we talked about in today's episode at learndobecome.com forward slash episode 76. So click over there if you want to get all the related items and pictures and all that kind of stuff. And then if you have not yet signed up for our free training where you learn the first four steps to starting to build your own command central, go to learndobecome.com forward slash step. Have an amazing day and we'll see you soon here at learndobecome.com.